if you like and wish to be alerted every time we release a new episode, please subscribe and like us. Thank you very much for following us. So, hello everybody and thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar. A recording uh, of the whole uh, webinar will be sent to you uh, and to the participants, to all the participants, uh, including the PowerPoint and then everything will be available also on the website. And you will receive, uh, if you will attend until the end of the webinar, you will receive a certificate of participation automatically. So thank you, everybody. And uh, today's webinar is about uh, Friend of the Sea certification for products from sustainable fishing and aquaculture in Sri Lanka and the Maldives, benefits and added value. The speakers today will be uh, Mario Passoni of our scientific department. Is the scientific officer, and uh, I will be one of the speakers, and also SGS uh, with uh, promote to, to promote Jaya Singh, who I will pass the microphone right now, and Mrs. Ruvini Rana Singh, and Mr. Tushara Nishanka from uh, all of them from SGS uh, Sri Lanka. And just to let you know, next uh, webinar organized by Friend of the Sea. This one is organized by SGS, but next uh, Friend of the Sea will be on the 29th of October at 3 p.m. Central Europe time. And it's going to be about sustainable deep sea fisheries, case study, Mazara fish. So, Mr. Pramod, would you like to kick off the uh, yes. webinar? Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paolo, for that uh, great introduction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all for today's webinar. And a very good afternoon to those of you who are joining from the South Asian region. And a good morning to those of you who are joining from other parts of the world, including Europe. Um, so today we have the session on the FOS certification, um, your gateway to you market through sustainable fishery. So we have uh, tried to make this as more educative and interactive as possible. So that means you get to ask your questions. Uh, we are doing a certain polling uh, to get to know your feedback. And in order to give you a comprehensive outlook uh, into this whole process and how SGS could uh, help in facilitating getting the certification, we have a great panel today, just like uh, Dr. Paolo had said. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Mario from the FOS team all the way from Italy. Uh, so uh, Mr. Mario, uh, we welcome you cordially for this session. And then we have the business development managers, uh, Mrs. Rini Ranasinghe from joining from SGS in Sri Lanka. And then we have uh, Mr. Tushar Nishankar, who is uh, joining us from uh, John Seafood. He's the international sales and marketing manager. So um, without much further ado, um, I will just quickly set the ground rules. And just as Paula had said, um, your mics will be muted for the whole session, but you could send us the questions, just like you said, using the questions tab to the left hand side of your application and um, the question answering session towards the end. And we will gather all the questions and then we will direct it to those who, who those of them who are presenting. Uh, but even while the sessions are ongoing, you could still send us the questions and then uh, please uh, contribute to the uh, pollings that we're doing. So we know that uh, you are engaged and then what you think of, of our services and uh, what, the general outlook of this session. So without much further ado, I would like to pass the first session to Dr. So again, he hello everybody and uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. Let me provide you, well, let me provide you now with some uh, basic information and update on the global seafood trend, uh, sustainability and also the local production and market trends in uh, Sri Lanka and the Maldives. FAO data is uh, telling us that global captures from fisheries have reached the maximum around the year 2000 and since and have since then uh, decreased because uh, most commercial fish stocks are either overfished or fully fished. The continuous increase in seafood uh, demand has been entirely compensated by the growth in uh, aquaculture, mostly in Asia. This trend is expected to continue according to the FAO, with also new technologies being developed to increase uh, aquaculture productivity. COVID uh, has had some impact on uh, production and demand of seafood, but most likely and hopefully 
not so relevant in the long term. The FAO estimates uh, forecasted the 1.7% reduction in seafood production, equivalent to minus 1.9 metric tons, million metric tons, sorry. This is, however, uh, quite in line with the uh, previous year's reduction. The most likely reason being the fact that fishing is tied to fishing seasons and seafood companies can hold in cold stores fish uh, caught uh, for several months and aquaculture companies cannot easily slow down and nor stop rearing and production. Since uh, demand instead most likely reduced more than production, global prices index has reduced 8.3%. As far as seafood demand is concerned, uh, global data is not available. However, regarding the, the most recent uh, changes due to COVID, however, uh, we know that uh, airlines, restaurants and tourism have dropped more than 50%, at least uh, in the past uh, months, and up to 70%. This has dramatically decreased the demand of products like shrimps, mussels, cephalopods, Salmon demand has also decreased by 15% because of the second and third waves of COVID. The recovery will be slow due to the economic constraints. The COVID's impact on tuna is uh, so far mostly positive for canned tuna and negative for non-canned tuna. A boost in uh, canned tuna purchases because of lockdown scares combined with stable supplies led to also to an increase in price different from when compared with the downward strength for most other seafood. Non-canned tuna demand instead dropped because of drop in tourism, traveling, restaurants, combined with fresh tuna vending, having to comply with social distancing rules. So COVID uh, has also had uh, an impact on fisheries management with the uh, waiving of observers' requirements or audits and cancellation of and delays of RFMO's meetings. It is important to implement alternatives such as CCTVs and online conferencing and auditing to increase efficiency and safety. COVID has also had an impact on consumers' demand for sustainable seafood. 58% of interviewed seafood business professionals expect in general much more focus on sustainability after COVID. Consumers are in fact becoming more and more aware and knowledgeable about environmental and social issues. In particular, from this European study, they show concern about welfare, endangered species, and pollution in aquaculture, and endangered species and overfishing as far as seafood from fisheries is concerned. Concern also about uh, social accountability, good working conditions of the crews, etc., is still relatively lower but will likely grow in importance in the next few years. We can see that, uh, consequently, consumers' willingness to pay for uh, sustainability, uh, for sustainable products, is, is relatively high, at least in uh, the uh, nations, the countries uh, studied in this uh, research. And in particular, they seem to be willing to pay up to 14% more for sustainably produced products. Let's look now at the situation in the Maldives and Sri Lanka as far as fishing and aquaculture development and sustainability. Catches uh, from fisheries in the Maldives account for approximately 160,000 tons, metric tons, of which 90% is tuna, mostly skipjack, and in good part caught with uh, pollen line and uh, dependent on uh, sardines as bait. 14% is yellowfin tuna, currently considered overexploited and fished mostly by means of longline and henline. 10% of the catch is uh, reef fish, mainly snapper, grouper, and emperor, caught with henlines and longlines. However, aquarium ornamental fish species are also caught, such as uh, sea cucumber, giant clams, black and uh, red coral, the latter considered overexploited. Reef sharks are also caught, while they represent an important resource for tourism and shark watching. Aquaculture has had the difficulty in de developing in the Maldives, 
as the islands are too small for land-based aquaculture normally. And seaweeds culture has proved to be unviable so far. There is potential, however, for pearl, giant clams, spiny lobsters, and grouper, as well as breeding Maldives clownfish. Sorry, I'm going to move this. And some other species that you can see here. As far as Sri Lanka, the situation is, is uh, quite different, in, more in favor of aquaculture. However, still 90% of seafood in Sri Lanka is fished, about 500,000 metric tons. There's been, of course, a huge impact by the tsunami, as you all know. But still, 2.4 million uh, people are employed in the sector. That's including also aquaculture. And the main products are tuna, swordfish, marlin, prawns, crabs, lobsters. Sri Lanka has improved its uh, fisheries management, also as a consequence of uh, pressure from the EU, with the introduction of vessel monitoring systems to monitor the deep sea fishing fleet. There's, uh, over, there's 18 arbors and uh, over 34 EU certified processing plants, that's including aquaculture as far as I remember. Aquaculture started uh, only in the 80s and it represents currently about 10% of seafood from Sri Lanka. There's been uh, issues with the uh, shrimp farming, the way that it developed in an unsustainable way. Uh, in particular, uh, due to incentives between 1992 and 1996, over 1,400 farms, of which a good part uh, uh, had issues of legality. And uh, all this uh, generated uh, uh, the issue of the problem of self-pollution, polluting among the producers. However, a major change occurred in 2004 which uh, very important improvements uh, promoted by the government itself and uh, the development of uh, semi-enclosed, fully recirculated systems uh, limited to the northwest province. So the current focus is in uh, small-scale farming and there's a national project to double sustainable aquaculture production up to 90,000 metric tons. There's potential for cage farming because of the small waves, uh, relatively small waves uh, around the coast. And uh, in particular, development of Baramundi and Asian sea bass called Moda in Sri Lanka and Tilapia in uh, RAS, recirculating aquaculture systems with uh, major in in investments also from Norway and other countries. And the uh, new systems have been introduced, like the bioflock and environmental alarm systems, which make us uh, really hope for a major turn in the way that uh, aquaculture has been produced. And uh, not only hope, but also actual uh, tangible uh, uh, results and achievements in uh, recent years. Ornamental fish production has also uh, taken an important part, an important share of the market with an increase of uh, four times in uh, 20 years. So in conclusion, fisheries uh, and aquaculture sustainable management improvement initiatives must continue in Sri Lanka and Maldives and be completed for all the species fished and farmed. In particular, focus should be given to critical species which are still considered to be overexploited, such as yellowfin, sea cucumber, shrimp, uh, overexploited or having an impact on, uh, on, uh, on the environment when farmed, ornamental species and corals. Uh, for some of these species and other species, in particular the ornamental species, there's a strong need for uh, increased and improved uh, data, data collection because most of them are data deficient. Ornamental fish species provide a higher value per individual and uh, are uh, viable also in the Maldives. They can be farmed in a sustainable way. So my belief is that uh, aquaculture in both countries have a uh, huge potential for sustainable growth 
as new technologies also are developed and uh, implemented, such as vertical farming. Sea cucumber, Maldives clownfish, seaweeds are among the potential uh, ones to be developed uh, in the different, in the two countries. So now that I provided you with the uh, outlook on uh, the global trends and related also to sustainable fishing and aquaculture production and what is happening in Sri Lanka and the Maldives, let me provide you with the very short uh, uh, description and update about uh, what we do and how we can uh, potentially be of support uh, to those companies in Sri Lanka and the Maldives which uh, have products uh, which are produced in a sustainable way with, with a lower impact on the environment and respecting the workers. So very rapidly, we are, I'm the founder and director of WSO, the World Sustainability Organization, which uh, has uh, launched and uh, manages two major programs, Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth, which are both conservation programs as well as uh, uh, certification standards for sustainable products and services. Everything started about 30 years ago with the Dolphin Safe Tuna program, which is also developed in Sri Lanka and Maldives, of which I'm currently the international director and which has managed by means of certification to reduce dolphin mortality in the Eastern Tropical Pacific in a dramatic way, but also to be the precursor of the sustainable seafood movement at the time when uh, sustainability was not even used as a word in this arena. And so in 2008, I decided to launch Friend of the Sea, which is uh, currently the only independent uh, certification standard uh, for sustainable fisheries and aquaculture. All the other standards have been somehow founded and are populated by the same companies that they certify. So we wanted to be free of uh, this risk of uh, conflict of interest. And uh, we are also the only program which can, with the same seal of approval, certify potentially both origins, wild caught or farmed. And the project has grown, as you can see from a recent UN study. It has grown to become uh, one of the leading certifications. This red part represents in terms of metric tons how much we have certified over the years compared to other standards. And there's currently over 1,000 companies in more than 70 countries which are Friend of the Sea certified. Among these, uh, several uh, Sri Lankan and Maldives companies and fisheries. So in recent years, we have uh, dedicated, uh, we have uh, expanded the scope of the Friend of the Sea certification to award with the Friend of the Sea logo other products and services which uh, respect the marine habitat. So we developed uh, standards for UV cream. We developed standards uh, for seaweeds uh, production, for dolphin and whale watching. Some of these, uh, some of the whale watching operators in Sri Lanka have been uh, certified friend of the sea for sustainable shipping, for sustainable ornamental species, uh, which uh, could be an interesting topic for the companies in Sri Lanka and Maldives, uh, sustainable restaurants and so on. So all these standards can also be uh, verified and carried out and certified by SGS in, uh, in Sri Lanka, potentially. So not only uh, wild catch, not only tuna, but also uh, aquaculture and all these uh, standards. So if any company is interested, uh, we and SGS are available to approach and to carry out the audits. So the, as, as I mentioned, the project has spread. These are some of the products certified, also omega-3 supplements. We are very strong in certification of omega-3. And uh, several uh, private label brands, as well as uh, several retailers are involved in the project and can provide uh, Friend of the Sea certified products on their shelves. Uh, we have in the recent years dedicated an increasing part of our budget uh, to conservation projects and campaigns. Uh, this is in line with our mission, uh, but it's also a very important added value for those companies which have uh, 
uh, friend of the sea certified products because they can immediately uh, declare and claim that they are also supporting our conservation projects. And as you see, we are also supporting uh, and having projects in uh, Sri Lanka, like the wake shark conservation in the Maldives, which we are supporting, and uh, several others which are related to uh, fishing impact. So wrapping up, I uh, just uh, two slides and then I pass the microphone to uh, Mario. Uh, WSO, the World Sustainability Organization, is the only platform which can uh, propose two consumer-friendly logos, finally not uh, acronyms, but very consumer-friendly claims, friend of the sea and friend of the earth, which cover uh, the whole uh, uh, range of food products and uh, non-food products and services based on uh, 30 years, a solid 30 years experience, completely independent from the industry and verified, as Mario will explain, by the national accreditation bodies with an international approach, multi-product, in particular for Friend of the Sea, we are aquaculture and, and, and wild catch, but also you saw uh, omega-3 supplements, seaweeds, UV creams and so on. So these will, uh, in the medium term, uh, increase uh, the visibility of the logo. And uh, the requirements are strict, as has been proved by all benchmarks, among the strictest ones. But our price list uh, is affordable. Our royalties are based on uh, company revenue. So in some cases, they are only a few hundred euros per year, per product. So they are normally considered to be very affordable. All our standards include also social accountability requirements. And we are very much concerned to provide the added value to the companies which get their products certified. And in fact, here are some of the benefits that the company can get. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, the focus is on the third party certification. Uh, which I will not spend other words uh, describing its importance, uh, its increasing importance in all world market. Uh, companies, uh, however, will also be able to uh, claim their uh, support to our conservation projects with no additional cost. And this can be mentioned on their marketing material and so on. Plus, uh, we have now developed a sustainability index, uh, which uh, companies which get their products uh, certified friend of the sea can uh, calculate and uh, obtain a scoring for uh, their products or for the whole company. And that's a different concept from certification, but can be of interest to some uh, retailers, or potential buyers, or for the company itself in order to improve over the months and the years. We also provide uh, some uh, sub-certifications. Uh, companies which pass the Friend of the Sea standard are also entitled to use uh, these other logos, Dolphin Safe, Turtle Safe, Whale Safe, because basically they would be complying with those uh, subset of requirements. And uh, we do provide uh, marketing and communication support. Uh, the companies get certified and immediately we send out the press releases to all the media and we have uh, media outreachers which get you mentioned in the media. We provide the video interview of the CEO or sustainability manager. We involve the, we involve the company in uh, webinars on the subjects related to sustainability in their sector. We have a restaurants uh, program. So if you are company selling to restaurants, as do most uh, uh, seafood companies in the Maldives and Sri Lanka, you will be providing an added value to your customers, which would be immediately included in our sustainable restaurants app and highlighted face uh, consumers and tourists. And uh, last but not least, uh, we also engage at uh, facilitating one-to-one -one meetings with potential buyers, provide uh, small, uh, short uh, consultancies, and allow you to uh, participate to our technical courses we carry out almost uh, every month. So I will now pass the microphone to Mario. Uh, I think, uh, Mario, shall I go on with the presentation on my desktop? Yeah, why not? 
Why not? Wonderful. Okay, okay so here we are. Welcome, everybody. My name is Mario Passoni. As uh, Paolo said, uh, I'm the scientific officer at Friend of the Sea. And uh, I would like to introduce you about our uh, certification system. In a few words, how does it work and, and how to apply? So Paolo was highlighting how is important the uh, third, per, uh, third party certification audit. Uh, yeah, it's very important in terms of uh, impartiality and trustability. Basically, Friend of the Sea is the scheme owner. And we are uh, uh, recognized by our national accreditation body in Italy that is called uh, Accredia. So periodically, Accredia is uh, supervising and assessing our activities in order to respect uh, uh, the requirements and the impartiality. Um, so uh, Friend of the Sea is not allowed to uh, carry out uh, the audit against uh, the Friend of the Sea standard for the companies and their products. Uh, this is uh, done by the certification bodies. The certification bodies uh, to uh, be allowed to carry out the audit, uh, they need to be um, recognized by their national accreditation body. So, for example, in Italy, we have uh, uh, two certification bodies, RINA and uh, DNV. Uh, they are recognized by uh, Accredia 2 per national accreditation body. In uh, Indonesia, we have uh, uh, Control Union that is uh, supervised and recognized by CAN. In Sri Lanka, we have uh, SGS that is uh, supervised and recognized by SLAB. Uh, and then finally, we have an, another certification body in uh, UK that is supervised by UCAS. So uh, certification bodies has to uh, start a very long process that uh, lasts uh, at least one year in order to get this recognition. And uh, the auditors from the certification bodies are trained by uh, the technical and scientific department of Friend of the Sea in order to uh, be ready to perform the audits against uh, our standards. And uh, there is uh, a periodically update about our standards uh, almost every two years. Okay, can you move on, Paolo, please? Okay. okay, so in a few words, how a company can apply and get a friend of a C certified? The first uh, step is to uh, visit our website, uh, friendofac.org, and uh, uh, go to the page called Apply. Well, once you are in this page, you have to look for uh, uh, your uh, related uh, um, company services and for example if you are managing a fishery you have to click on the one uh, called uh, uh, PIF for seafood cough by fisheries and fleet. What is a PIF? A preliminary information form is basically a way uh, to collect data about the companies uh, by friend of the sea. Can you can you move to the uh, next slide please? Okay so basically we gather data, general data about uh, your company. And then once uh, is uh, uh, fulfilled, uh, this form is forwarded automatically to uh, our, our, uh, our out outreachers uh, manager in front of the sea. Um, once it's done, the outreachers are uh, creating and providing the company with uh, an agreement to be signed up. And then all these information are forwarded to excellent to all our uh, certification bodies. Uh, once they got the, the information, they create uh, and they prepare a tailor-made quotation for, uh, for the audit, and they send to the company the, the quotation. And then it's up to the company to decide uh, to decide uh, with uh, which certification body make the audit. Um, okay, so once the company has decided the uh, certification body and agreement uh, is uh, signed up uh, even with the certification body, we need to undergo against an audit. Here I uh, made a screenshot about uh, one of our main seafood standards, uh, that is uh, the one about uh, wild fisheries. And basically, how does it work? In each standard, uh, there is a series of uh, criteria or requirements 
to be respect uh, about the sustainability to be respected. We have different sections. For example, here you can see the one about ecosystem and habitat impact. There are there are uh, uh, many other uh, sections. Uh, for example, about social uh, accountability, waste management, energy management, uh, stock status, and so on. Every requirement have, uh, has a level of uh, importance. They are classified as essential, important, uh, or recommendation. Basically, to um, achieve the certification, the companies must respect all the essential and important requirements. A recommendation, as uh, the name suggests, are uh, basically recommendation inputs for the future uh, about things uh, to be improved or respected in the next years. Okay, so uh, the audit uh, can last uh, different months, especially for this uh, kind of uh, this version of a wild uh, standard. And at the end, um, the auditor and the certification body has to uh, take a final conclusion. Of course, there are only two options. The company, the unit of certification complies with uh, the friend of the sea requirements or does not comply. Of course, it can happen that uh, a company or unit of certification doesn't respect immediately all the requirements. Uh, no worries about it. The unit of the certification body is uh, giving time to the company in order to get in compliance with uh, all the requirements. Okay, uh, so then here in this page, uh, if that is the last page of the audit report, uh, there is uh, a list uh, of uh, uh, non-conformities in case there are, of course. Uh, and now they have been resolved. So once this has been done, can you move, Paolo, please? Uh, a certificate is issued by the certification body. Uh, this certificate has been issued by SGS to John Seafood. Uh, and here you can find a, a list of information, important information about the company. So, for example, uh, here you can see the name of a company, the species uh, certified, uh, in this case, the yellowfin tuna, and the swordfish, and the date of certification. You have to know that the certification, the certificate lasts uh, three years. And uh, after, uh, or better, within 12 months from the initial audit, uh, there is a surveillance audit in order to assess and verify that uh, uh, the company is still in compliance with uh, our requirements. So, uh, then, uh, at the end of the uh, three years, uh, the company has to uh, make a uh, recertification audit to uh, get a new certificate. Um, okay, after that, uh, once the certificate is issued, has been issued, can you move? Paolo, please. Uh, we uh, upload all this information on our system and automatically uh, this information are shown on our website, as you can see, for example, here. Uh, then for wild fisheries, uh, there are additional sections. For example, I personally update the list of uh, uh, certified fleet with all the relevant information. And we have even a section that is public uh, uh, where we basically upload the audit reports about wild fisheries in order to be transparent. So basically every stakeholder can uh, uh, easily download the, uh, uh, the audit reports and ask for information if needed. Okay, uh, so this is in a, in a very few words, how does it work? Of course, uh, um, at the end of a webinar, you can ask for uh, to, to get more information or uh, simply visit us on our website, as you can see here, or write to me at, uh, this, uh, at quality at friendofsea.org. So thanks for following. Thank you, Mario. I will pass the word now to uh, SGS. I will uh, just uh, show a first poll. We have two polls. One is more uh, generic. Um, or like a more uh, a test to understand uh, what your feelings are about uh, future trends in sustainability. 
And uh, the other one, which I will uh, show towards the end, is, uh, or I can show right now, uh, just uh, both of them together, uh, is about uh, your uh, satisfaction related to the to today's webinar. You can fill it out uh, towards the end if you prefer, and uh, and also you will have the possibility to uh, let us know in case you wish to be contacted at the uh, following the webinar. So I'll show you both uh, uh, both polls. So. This is, uh, in fact, about uh, your satisfaction level, and uh, the, the the information will be kept uh, confidential. And uh, and then uh, the other poll is more uh, like uh, our curiosity: which do you think is the most uh, promising promising sector uh, activity to be developed in the area in Sri Lanka and Maldives? Uh, improvement uh, and continuous improvement of sustainable fisheries. Or is aquaculture the future or the sector which will develop faster and uh, also maybe sustainable ornamental fish uh, production? So I see already seven persons answered. And I will show the results of this one to everybody just for your information. Okay. This is ongoing, so you can play with it uh, later <laughs> or during the speech. I pass the word to Pramod if you wish to introduce uh, the next uh, speakers and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paolo, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mario. Uh, the presentation was very insightful. I'm sure the attendees must have got a clear and a comprehensive picture about the FOS, what it stands for, and what the process is. And uh, just like we said, uh, please, um, uh, participate in our polls we can get to know what you think and also please keep the questions coming please type it in the questions tab and uh, just for your knowledge uh, we are recording this session so in case if any of you would like to get this recording of this session please contact us and share your email address and we will send you the recording right now um, i would like to invite Rini um, Singh, the business development managers of sgs to tell you about the services that we offer at sgs and how we can help the clients in getting the FOA certification. Uh, SCS at this moment is a unique junction wherein we are the first and the only company in Sri Lanka certification company to have obtained the ISO 17065 accreditation status from the SLAB uh, for the FOA certification. So Ms. Ruini will have an in-depth uh, an elaborative description on that and uh, I, in, I invite all of you to take part in it and I would welcome Mr. Winnie to come and take the platform and uh, um, Dr. Paolo if you could kindly grant me the permission yeah. to uh, share the screen. Mrs. Ruvini, maybe the microphone. Yes. Okay. Well. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you Pramod and uh, good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to uh, be here today briefing you uh, on our role uh, in this uh, FOS certification. So my uh, next few minutes on this presentation, next please, uh, we'll uh, have the... Um, uh, just, just a second. Agenda. Second, yeah. yes, please. <laughs> because Sorry. topics are like uh, who we are okay. and what our role in FOS as well as the other seafood solutions we have got for y'all. Next. SGS, uh, we are the world's leading in testing, inspection, and certification company with 93,000 employees strategically located around the world. SGS work across seven global industries and throughout the supply chain, providing specialized business solutions that improve quality, safety, productivity, and reduce risks. Today, we are the world's leader in TIC industry, the leading provider of competitive advantage, driving sustainability and delivering trust. We are globally recognized and benchmarked for quality and integrity. And most importantly, we continue to push ourselves to deliver innovative services and solutions that help our customers move their business forward. So, our move in FOS audit itself is one good example for that. And we aim to remain in this position. Moving on to SGS Lanka, we were founded in 1995, having our head offices and laboratories based in Colombo. 
we have more than 100 qualified professionals working in our offices and laboratories. We are also geared with uh, state-of-art laboratory services, where we have obtained 1725 accreditation for testing and sampling. We have also obtained several recognitions, approvals from authorities, ministries, uh, to be namely, uh, to, to name it, uh, Ministry of Fisheries, Ministry of Health, uh, Central Environment Authority, and FASA India. We have not limited ourselves um, to, to uh, Sri Lanka, but also touched many clients in Maldives as well. Next. So uh, coming to the most important topic for the day uh, from our side, what our role in FO is. So seafood certification standard encourage uh, confidence in seafood for human consumptions. In the long run, they provide seafood business with the motivation to implement integrated management system for seafood safety, quality, traceability, and sustainability, ensuring their long-term survival. So we've been working with this industry for more than decades. We felt the pulse. We saw your future. We took a bold step uh, in getting ourselves ready for the industry betterment. FO is such an uh, product, we invested on thinking of the future of the fishery sector. Yes. So where do we enter? Next slide. Uh, so the process can be uh, commenced uh, by dialing SGS or like sending us an email uh, stating your interest uh, in FOS. Same time, you can uh, contact FOS as well, like Mario said. There you will be asked to fill up the uh, PIF, uh, where you have to, um, as he said, that where you fill up the basic information as to what scope uh, you have want to cover and the operational details and maybe on uh, raw material sourcing, etc. So once we receive this uh, PIF, the daily fill PIF from you, we will have the agreement ready. Uh, we will have the agreement ready for you. Uh, while uh, as, as you acknowledge or the accept the quotation, we can uh, start the audit process. So um, please mind that uh, this audit can be a minimum of two to three days, provided that the votes are available for audit. So these are the three main um, scopes that we could cover. Uh, aqua, uh, if you are exporter uh, of aquaculture and farming, uh, sustainable fishery and fleet, or uh, exporter of fish oil or fish feed, any of you can just uh, give us a buzz uh, or like, uh, email us. We should be able to um, give you with the uh, needed information. And once that is done, and once we have received the required information to start the uh, audit, uh, there will be two basic areas that we look for, the factory audit as well as the um, boat audit. Um, and also I would like to mention an uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, important uh, or, the, or I would say a frequent question, like how do we arrive on the number of boats to be audited? Uh, that again, based on the uh, capacity you uh, have, uh, capacity of a business. And uh, for an example, if for 100 boats, according to equation, we arrive around eight to uh, 10 uh, boats to be audited at the certification audit. And uh, maybe in the surveillance audit, you might have to uh, you have, you might have to go through only one third of the initial certification audit, which is around two to three boats to be audited. So with the closure of the finding on unconformities during the factory and boat audits, if this satisfies the requirement of friend of the sea certification, thus a certification will be issued. A copy of the issued uh, certificate and the summary report will be sent to friend of the sea association with mon one month since the issue of the certificate. And so a few uh, things to uh, know about the audit uh, certification it uh, it is valid for three years and uh, but still you have to go through a surveillance audit just like other uh, food audits yes next so the uh, next most common question why SGS uh, as promote rightly said we are the first and foremost uh, 
organization in Sri Lanka to obtain ISO 17065 uh, for the uh, FOS. And we have been in the industry uh, for like more than two decades now, not only for SDS, but also for the other services as well. So we have this uh, vast experience in conducting FOS audits as well as the other certifications. Uh, not only in uh, Sri Lanka, but also in Maldives. We have uh, qualified auditors, both uh, for local and overseas FOS certification if needed. So, uh, and uh, we have not uh, limited ourselves uh, even during uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We have uh, done most uh, remotely, uh, we have done the audits remotely uh, in order to um, help you in completing your audit processes. Next. Hello, may I suggest everybody to turn off your vo microphone, uh, the other speakers, please, because there is still an echo. Thank you. So this is, uh, I mean, I just said about our accreditation. This is ISO 17065 accreditation uh, from Sri Lanka Accreditation Board. Uh, and we are the only um, service provider right now in Sri Lanka. And even in the globe, uh, in SGS network, uh, who's holding this uh, certification uh, and the accreditation. Next. So um, with that, uh, I, I am sure like you have a clear idea of what our role, what SGS can do uh, for you to obtain this FOS certification. And let me uh, quickly take you through the other seafood solutions uh, that we offer at SGS Lanka. So SUS offers a wide range of solution, solutions covering the entire supply chain, assisting fish farming, processors, traders, and retailers. With a comprehensive range of uh, independent inspection, testing, certification, and technical support services specific to the seafood sector, we help companies worldwide to monitor and validate safety, quality, compliance, and sustainability. Next, yeah. So selecting the right um, uh, supply is a critical uh, in successful sourcing. So how can you? How can this be met? So we have our services lined up from uh, uh, from the uh, farm to fork concept. Uh, we have all the um, quality assurance processes lined up uh, for your need. So it can be a testing service. It can it can be an inspection or a audit and certification service. So in testing, um, next slide, please. Yeah, so in testing, uh, we could uh, we have, as I said in the earlier, we have state of art laboratories in Colombo, Sri Lanka, for uh, chemical, microbiology, sensory, and physical examination. In inspection, we could uh, do these production checks, loading, supervision, container inspection, and so on. And in audit and certifications, uh, we also could do uh, the FOS other than FOS uh, BAP. HACCP, BRC, IFS, FSSC 22000, and also some of the social accountability schemes um, and fishing vessel audits. Next. So this is how uh, we can help you uh, by managing your risks, do your business better and meet your obligations and safeguard your consumers. And uh, I'm sure that uh, some of these uh, services and even the FOS uh, has, has assisted you to uh, find new markets and it also helps you to comply with complex legislations and also to end uh, by having these uh, processes uh, in your organization it ensures to uh, ensure that you have the correct storage uh, the shipping packing distribution for your products and and most importantly it ensures quality and safety throughout the diverse supply chain next Wrapping up, these are some of the benefits uh, benefits that you could um, get if you if you can join hand uh, with us with us with SGS. So we have this global network, and we have the necessary accreditation and the state of art technology. And um, other than the uh, processes, we also have a very good um, key account management process, uh, like a customer care, customer service uh, uh, unit, uh, and uh, and also we are. They are always for you all to um, come and uh, talk about your technical uh, problems and etc. So with that, I uh, end my presentation. Um, thank you. And if you want to have more uh, details on our services and on like uh, on the FOS process, you can in time contact us. Thank you.
I hope I'm audible to all of you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vinny, for that insightful presentation. And uh, we have a couple of questions as well. We'll be keeping it towards the end of the session to answer. And keep your questions coming. And now we will be moving to Mr. Tushar Nishankar, who is the International Sales and Marketing Manager at John Seafood. Uh, he will be giving you his testimonial in obtaining the FOI certification for his establishment, which is John Seafood. So I think uh, most of our attendees would be quite interested to find out um, the testimonials and the benefits that uh, he has reaped from that. So I would cordially like to invite uh, Mr. Tushara to take the center stage. Mr. Tushara, the platform is all yours. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I am very pleased to. Uh, share experience uh, in terms of FOS as well as uh, support we were given by SGS for the uh, particip participants here. So uh, John Seafood actually initiated in 2011 and uh, so far it is almost nine years. Uh, and uh, during last nine years, uh, we have been able to uh, become the highest revenue earner in uh, seafood sector. Along with that, we have been awarded by many uh, uh, prestigious export-related awards. For example, big exporter in the category and uh, some category-related award, uh, awards and all. So the, re uh, the success behind our, su uh, reason behind our success throughout last nine years is purely because of, of uh, the visionary leadership as well as uh, strategical movement. So when it comes to strateg strategical movement, Friend of Sea certification gave us a massive helping hand because um, as everybody out there uh, might be uh, knowing, uh, we can't uh, uh, straight away focus on uh, supermarkets if we don't have certifications like uh, FOS. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, fisheries and seafood industries uh, 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 industry where there's minimum uh, market entry barriers, like everybody who has a capital and who has a, an intention can start uh, fish, fishing or fisheries export related business. But if you want to differentiate yourself uh, as a uh, differentiated organization, of course, you got to uh, think about certification like it for us. So in our history, uh, how we were successful within last nine years uh, to be claimed as the highest revenue earner in uh, seafood industry and how we grow our clientele and how we grow our volume is purely because of our attention towards certification. So FOS gave us a massive support uh, for us to be successful today. And other than FOS, actually SGS gave us a uh, full cooperation in our process of uh, obtaining FOS. So uh, for all the participants, I can strongly recommend FOS as a certification that you can differentiate yourself against your competitors and, and, and as a way that you can grow your business exponentially and become a, a leader, market leader. So finally, let me once again highly recommend uh, SGS as an institution who can consult us or who can help us to get the certificate. And as a certification, we can predominantly recommend a friend of C certification as, a, as a, an easiest uh, certification to take and uh, easiest way to easiest way for everyone to be differentiated and grow their business. So thank you very much for this valuable uh, opportunity for us to share the experience for the sake of uh, newcomers into seafood industry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tushara. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Tushara. Uh, it was very nice to hear your opinion and your feedback. And um, so we have uh, finished the presentations for today. And now we will be opening up the question and answering session. So if you could uh, kindly put your questions into the chat box, uh, we should be able to uh, answer it. So you can go ahead and put your questions right now. Thank you. Uh, Rovini, I saw that you already answered some of the questions. Let me see 
maybe you can answer this one um, publicly. Do you also run audits in India potentially if there's a company interested uh, in India? Yes, we can do that. Yes, okay. we can do that. So then uh, I have a question for um, SGS may do audits only for fisheries or also aquaculture? We can do for both. We can do for fishery as well as for aquaculture. Okay, and then a question I think for uh, also for Mario, can you, you explain more about the audit scope, uh, which are like uh, this, the scope is uh, to verify that uh, the, first of all, it's a, it's a product uh, certification, right, Mario? And uh, uh, it is, uh, so a company could have uh, one product line, certified friend of the sea, and uh, other products line which are not certified. The scope is always to verify that, that uh, a given product originates from a friend of the sea approved uh, source, be it uh, aquaculture production or fisheries. And so the, the audit, uh, can be different depending if it's a processing company only with no fleet, then it would be a traceability audit or chain of custody audit, mainly focused on uh, verifying that uh, traceability is in place, that the products are segregated from uh, non-approved origins. And also there are some social accountability requirements because we want to be sure that uh, the people, uh, the employees, uh, the, the workers, the labor force involved in the processing uh, uh, complies with basic uh, uh, social accountability requirements. And then uh, as far as the requirements, as Mario already anticipated, these are basically for fisheries the following ones. The product uh, must originate from a stock that is not considered to be overexploited. Uh, there are few exceptions uh, given in the requirement for small scale fisheries, etc. But uh, uh, this is one of the fundamental requirements. And then the fishing method must be selective. So maximum 8% uh, discards. Among the bicot species, they cannot be endangered species considered to be vulnerable or worse, according to the IUCN. The fishing method cannot impact the seabed in an unsustainable way. And uh, it, the management system for the fishery must uh, be uh, collecting data by means of observers or uh, on board or at the, the, the time of unload, depending on the, also the size of the fishery. We are more demanding for uh, industrial fleets, industrial vessels, uh, which must have uh, observers on board or in alternative CCTVs. Uh, the, um, the management system uh, must uh, be um, setting uh, precautionary limits uh, and uh, must uh, aim at uh, sustainability. The, then there are requirements related uh, to the compliance with uh, uh, the laws in terms of uh, minimum mesh size, for example, or uh, uh, fish size. Um, and uh, fishing seasons, compliance with the total allowable catches, compliance with IUU regulations. And um, last but not least, we have requirements about waste management, which is uh, quite a major issue more recently, and uh, requirements about uh, energy efficiency and uh, social accountability requirements in general, also for the crews. And this is a, an exclusivity of Friend of the Sea that no other certification out there, uh, at least among the major ones, uh, is taking into consideration. And we have these requirements from the start uh, more than 10 years ago. 
aquaculture you can check at the requirements themselves they are available on the website and uh, and so that's that's the description of the scope of the certification and uh, the audit requirements let me see if there are i don't, sorry mario i took the word but uh, do you have anything else to add no 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 nothing else to add quite complete okay thank you and uh, <clears throat> How there's a question about the sustainability index. Uh, how can Friendly Sea Sustainability Index uh, be useful for creating more awareness among companies who are not aware about sustainability? Well, uh, we we have launched the sustainability index, which is uh, based on a relatively short and simple questionnaire available on our website uh, to meet the needs of. Uh, those companies which maybe are don't do not feel ready yet to open up completely their doors to on-site audit etc but want to make a first step and uh, start to see how much they are scoring and if they can improve that scoring over the um, months and years and then may possibly go for certification and also to meet the need uh, of uh, those companies who want to provide an actual scoring on their products or for their own company it may be with an um, objective to compare with other players in the same sector uh, or to meet the requests of retail chains which are now also in some cases interested in uh, obtaining this uh, type of index uh, from uh, companies and last but not least uh, normally sustainability index are used uh, uh, for um, accessing funds uh, from banks or similar um, which request uh, a high sustainability index uh, score and uh, and so that's that's the objective and uh, let me see if i answer the question how friendly sea sustainability index can be useful for creating more awareness among companies Yes, of course, it's another tool to raise awareness uh, also at consumer level. So we have some other question. Let's see. I think so. Um, we have heard that the government of Sri Lanka is promoting more about uh, products from organic origin and sustainability. Do you have any more details about it? How you can work to improve that more in collaboration with Friend of the Sea? And also, again, uh, do your audits uh, are only in English or you may be available to speak with companies in local languages to help Sri Lanka, uh, SGS, maybe you would like to answer if, if you are aware of organic uh, or sustainable initiatives from the government and uh, and then technically if your audits are also in local languages if necessary. Um, yes, uh, uh, to answer the second question about uh, the different languages, yes, we can definitely work with uh, people who are using different dialects. I will be using a translator because the audit process and the services would remain the same, uh, but the language barrier could definitely be overcome by a translator. So we are more open to working with all kinds of uh, communities and from different countries, the clan. So um, we value diversity. So definitely we can provide the service for anyone whose first language is not English. And that is not an issue. And to answer the first question about the Sri Lankan government's organic drive, yes, uh, we have uh, taken, the government has taken the official decision in promoting the um, organic agricultural products and um, I'm sure that it will spread to other areas as well. Currently at the moment, SGS uh, helps in the capacity of uh, carrying out testing and inspection for the um, uh, organic products. Uh, we don't do the certification. However, uh, we are planning on expanding our services in that direction. But uh, anyone who is interested to get our services in that, di that direction could definitely definitely contact us through the email or the contact numbers that we share and we can provide you with more information through that i hope that answers uh, that answered both the questions and uh, yeah we are we can definitely take some more so give us a couple of minutes so i have a question back. for you for you Pramoda. you must know a lot of uh, also aquaculture companies in sri lanka i suppose 
maybe for other audits uh what what is your feeling uh, are they improving uh have, have they improved over the years uh, are there some species or farming sectors which uh, are uh, lower impact and uh, deserving certification any thoughts about aquaculture in sri lanka and yeah, yeah, there's definitely an improvement in the aquaculture sector. And uh, from the feedback we're getting from the clients and the requests we are getting, yes, there's a trend in that direction. We lost uh, Pramod uh, to other species as well. Uh, am I audible? Yes, now, yes. You went yeah. off for so, a few seconds. You no, said that be, uh, you were just introducing yeah, about yeah, aquaculture yeah. in Sri Lanka. Yes. So, yeah, there, there's definitely an improvement from the requests we are getting uh, and the other feedback. And uh, I mean, uh, my team would be best suited to answer that question because they, they are on the field carrying out certifications and testings. But yes, we do see a big improvement uh, in that direction. I mean, they are trying to expand. So uh, in the next few years, I see a lot of companies joining um, with the certification, the sustainability, because uh, they are uh, in the process of grasping the concept of sustainability and how it impacts their products and how the European market and any other markets would um, behave towards sustainable products. So, yes, there's hope and uh, there's huge enthusiasm amongst the clients. It's uh, about, uh, I saw that you have other uh, seafoods products in, uh, in your product range, in your website like yeah. exotic species like red snapper red grouper brown grouper baramundi maki maki so yeah. i just wondered uh, are these uh, from aquaculture to uh, are are they part of your production chain or your sourcing externally and uh, do you have a feeling that some of these could uh, stand a good chance to be certified sustainable maybe they already have a certification Maybe from yeah. some other certification, that would still be fine. I mean, uh, we are very open and uh, we're part of the same movement. So, yeah, actually, uh, as you correctly said, uh, we uh, have taken the certification for uh, tuna and sole. And uh, we are actually planning to get the certification for rest of the reef fish, uh, uh, reef fish categories also. But uh, at the moment, we are doing very small scale when it comes to uh, the reef, reef fish category. Uh, our main, uh, maybe 90, 98% is on uh, sort and tuna. So uh, that is in our uh, uh, plans. So hopefully uh, we'll be touching with, upon with you with regard to the certification of reef fish category as well. So these others are all uh, wild caught. There's no farming in your uh, production offer, in your products yeah, offer. Uh, Farming is also there when it comes to uh, Baramundi. Uh, oh. there, there's a bit of yeah, there's a bit of farm and farming, but rest of the the categories are wild cats, wild caught, yes. And uh, to your knowledge, uh, is the farming of Baramundi well managed in Sri Lanka, or at least from your uh, sources, in terms uh, yes. of the limited yes, impact absolutely. on the environment? Yes, uh, well managed, but not not the all. But uh, uh, we, as a company, have a plan of uh, having own farm of Baramundi in times to come. So the the, the discussions are in initial stages. So uh, the answer for your question is uh, not hundred percent, but maybe uh, partially. And uh, Mario, I remember that there's a a new uh, stock assessment for yellowfin uh, towards the end of this year, I think, uh, from IOTC. Probably we need to double check. Okay, yes. and uh, and uh, Mr. Tushara, what do you have any insight about uh, the current uh, status of yellowfin? Do you have any hope that it will improve uh, in the short term? Uh, you know that uh, there is uh, still an issue, uh, not necessarily caused by the Sri Lanka fleet, but in general, uh, altogether, yeah. the, the stock is uh, 
somehow overexploited and there's a need to improve. So do you have, uh, are you together with the rest of the industry in Sri Lanka doing coordinating and uh, putting effort to, to try to reduce, to improve the state of the stock of yellowfin? I, I think VMS uh, can be a very important tool, right? To try and regulate the fleet is, is, is what is happening. Yeah, uh, we are fully aware of the, the situation and uh, we uh, at the managerial level we do discuss about these matters and in our future strategical perspective of course we factor those matters but uh, we have certain uh, certain cooperation with other uh, companies also in Sri Lanka because uh, we know it's a risk for everybody we have to do something better so that it will be uh, the fish will be sustainable for us. So, but as you said, not, it's not an easy task. Like we can't, we can't control them. But uh, as far as we can, we have to do uh, sustainable measures and uh, sort of cooperative, cooperative uh, uh, practices to uh, to sustain the fishes, uh, yellowfin fish. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So maybe, thank you very much, Mr. Tushar. I think uh, maybe we have the uh, last few questions. Oh, a question for SGS. What is the average time for an audit? Does it take months or is it uh, faster, let's say, uh, more rapid? SGS, uh, maybe you're muted. What is the average yes, time? Um, it, it, it depends. Uh, it depends on the type of audit. If it's wild catch, then of course, depending on the number of boats that are there. And uh, if it is our farm uh, farming, then it uh, depends on the number of hatcheries. So usually um, uh, for wild catch around one to three days and for farming, uh, just one, one or two days max. It doesn't take months. Uh, it doesn't take months. Uh, the process is quite smooth and uh, easy and it's very efficient and fast. So yeah, between one to three days. That's the time we would say, but that depends on the size of the enterprise, the size of the fleet. Yes, in fact, Mario, if I'm uh, not wrong, uh, the, there is uh, some specification about this also in our certification procedure, right? Uh, which, which is available on the website in terms of the number of uh, or length of the audit uh, related to the number of vessels and so on. Yes, there are strict rules, right? Yes, it is. In the document uh, uh, FOS0001, our accreditation and certification procedure basically is uh, at the end of the document is written uh, how to calculate the length of the audit based on the number of vessels or uh, farm sites to be visited. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tushara, the last question is for you. Maybe a new customer. <laughs> There's uh, somebody asking uh, if, um, as far as Red Snapper, are you available or able to provide uh, this product also for overseas market? I think the person is in India. If any requirement, uh, as few inquiries are there. Of course, uh, that's a big demand for Red Snapper that we, we know that. And uh, we, as I said, uh, we are exporting a very small scale so uh, but i don't think we can we can have more than enough stock uh, to get into a market like india because our, our focus is uh, europe and usa so uh, but we also have very difficulties in collecting these type of fishes from uh, from from our sources but that is available in sri lanka there's a very big demand in europe okay great so Oh, the inquiry is for US, the, the inquiry for Red Snapper. So you can be touched then later with yeah. the person who made the question. So I'll just have a look at uh, the, <clears throat> that, the, the polls. Well, I think uh, that the, the, the webinar was appreciated. We have uh, 25 votes in favor and uh, and then as far as uh, the question about uh, which do you think is the most promising sector activity to be developed in the area of Sri Lanka and Maldives, 
Uh, it seems that uh, there's a belief that fisheries is the sector to go, even if, let's say, probably there's not much uh, space for growth in terms of catches, uh, uh, but uh, probably sustainable fisheries we consider to be an important field to uh, insist upon. And, uh, and also aquaculture with five votes, and nobody voted for ornamental fish. And I would Great. like to thank all of you attendees uh, for coming and being a part of this interactive session. I hope we have covered as much ground as we can. But uh, if you have any questions um, after the seminar, so please do send us those questions. Uh, we have shared our email address. Please send us an email or to our contacts. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for being part of that. We would uh, definitely like to see you again in another webinar like this in the future. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon, all of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Subscribe to our channel to get more content about sustainability.